After learning all the functional groups, we need to be able to write structural formulas of organic compounds. There are three different ways to show the structure of a molecule. We have the expanded, which is the one that will show every single bond between carbon and other atoms, like this one, where we see carbon and hydrogen is being shown every atom. We also have the condensed formula that is coming in the next, and also the skeletal formula. So there are three different ways to represent an organic compound. In this structure, we have the molecule of methane showing the combination of electrons of four hydrogens with carbon. Every electron from carbon is sharing one electron with hydrogen. This is a two-dimensional structure for the molecule of methane. But we also have the best representation for methane in which is showing the shape of the molecule. Since it has four electron groups, according to the Vesper theory, four electron groups will point towards a tetrahedron. That is the reason why the central carbon will have a tetrahedral shape with an angle of 109.5. We learn there are more than 60 millions of compounds, and one of the reasons for the richness of organic chemistry is the property of carbon to bond to itself. This is the property that we call catenation. Carbon can bond to many carbons like in this case, we have the straight chain where carbons are bonded to only one or two carbons. We also have the family of branched alkanes where carbon can be bonded to more than one carbon. Carbon can also make cyclic structures. This is only to show the framework of the family of the aliphatic compounds where we have the line of carbons, but we understand that carbon needs to make an octet, so we can complete this four carbon line with hydrogens. We also can complete this one with hydrogen. So we remember every time we see a carbon that has only uh, two bonds or three bonds, we must complete those structures with hydrogens. In the condensed formula, the hydrogens bonded to carbon are grouped and the subscripts indicate how many hydrogens are bonded to that particular carbon. For example, we can group three hydrogens, one, two, three hydrogens here, to make a condensed structure. We have condensed these two here. So if we are going to write this molecule in a much simpler way, instead of showing every single hydrogen, we can put them together. Those three hydrogens are bonded to that end carbon. This is only one, two, two, and three. So this molecule has six carbons, but the subscript is indicating that those hydrogens are bonded to the carbon right next to it. Let us practice a little more. Let's transform this expanded formula into condensed formulas. So we see carbons with three hydrogens bonded. Place the hydrogen and the subscripts. This central carbon has only one hydrogen, so we place it right next to it. We do the same for this one. And now this one has two hydrogens. There is a simpler way to represent organic compounds, and that is what we call the skeletal structures. In these formulas, the carbons are not going to be shown only lines, angles are representing the carbon-carbon bond. So here we have one carbon-carbon bond, and the three hydrogens that are supposed to be around this 
last n carbon are understood to be there to fulfill the octet of carbon. So I have one here just to show, but it's supposed to be without. We also have a, where two lines meet, we have two hydrogens bonded to this carbon. So there is a carbon here, but I'm not showing that. Where three lines meet, there is a CH group. That means we have three lines. In these three lines, we will have a CH3 will be in here. This is a CH. Every time that we see three lines that meet, that means that we have three single bonds attached to one carbon. And when we have four lines that meet, I call that like the letter X, is where we have a carbon that has no hydrogens attached. Let's convert some expanded structures into a skeletal form. This one is the molecule of isobutane. This is isobutane. It has four carbons, so we need to make a zigzag for the hydrocarbon chain is three carbons long. So we have three carbons long and only one branch. So if we see the molecule of isobutane has three methyl groups that are not shown after it is in the skeletal form. So it will be this way. The second molecule is, this one is one, two, three, four, five carbons long. So we make the zigzag for five carbons and it will have one branch. Let's practice a little more of the skeletal formula. The first molecule we see is a cyclic alkane or cycloalkane. We can build that easily. Now this molecule is five carbons long. You can see five carbons in the line. This is also five carbons long. And this one is six carbons long. We can see here the length of the hydrocarbon has become a zigzag. Now we need to put the alkyl substituents or the branches. For this one that has an alkyl group in this position, which is this CH3. Now on this one, it is a two carbons long alkyl group. It also has another branch, so it has two branches, which is this methyl group. We can place that right here. And the last two, this is very simple. This one is four carbons long. You see one, two, three, four. It's four carbons long. This one is five, and it has one, two, and three alkyl substituents. So we can place them in the right position, one, two, and three.